Pete, great to have you here today. And, you know, of course, we all love a good scandal, unless you're in the center of it, right? But that's the name of a hit show on ABC about powerful people behaving badly. It stars Kerry Washington as the toughest nail, nails crisis manager in Washington, D.C., and there's no shortage of scandals and secrets for her to keep under wraps. Really? In Washington? You don't say. Take a look. I've been racking my brain trying to find a reason why you'd be stupid enough to willingly attempt to defraud the American people. And the only reason I can come up with for why you'd be in so deep is because you were his mistress. Five? That's sexist and insulting. You'd never suggest Scooter Libby was screwing Dick Cheney. Four, the lengths you're going to try to twist this into a conspiracy are cause for concern. You should speak to someone about that. Three, the president is awake and talking. Two, in the past three minutes, you've called me a criminal, a whore, an idiot, and a liar. So this is pretty much the last time we'll be speaking. So one, who I am or am not screwing, what I am or am not doing is no longer any of your damn business. <laughs> wow, that was intense. You had me, I mean, you had me scared there for a minute, Carrie. She scares me, Olivia Pope. Olivia right? Pope scares me. I would not want to cross her. She is one tough lady, Cookie. isn't she? Yes, she is. Well, the show is really very popular, so congratulations. Thanks. And I feel like you're in, right in your sweet spot right now, oh. Carrie, which makes me so happy because I've long been a fan of yours, but I feel like everything is just hitting for you right now. Do you feel thank that way? You. I, do, I mean, I feel, I, thank you for saying that. I, I feel like this is a character that I really can bring all of myself to, you know, because she is so smart. She's smarter than I am. She's more powerful than I am. And she um, I don't is know more she's courageous. Smarter. She's very smart. <laughs> this is a very smart young woman. You are. Coming from you. No, you are. I know you are. We've had conversations, and you've always impressed me so much with your, well, your intellect. You. It's nice as a woman to play a character who you know, where I don't have to dumb down, I don't have to play ignorant, I don't have to, um, you know, I'm not the love interest, I have a love interest, you know, I'm not the girlfriend, I have a very complicated boyfriend. Um, <laughs> so it's it, it's nice to, to be a woman and to be a person of color and to be at the center of, of the story. I think it says a lot about our audiences being open-minded that the heroes of our stories, or the anti-heroes, can, can look like all of us. You no, know? it's true, and so important yeah. yeah well what do they say if, if you can't see it you can't be it that's right? right and that's, that's why right. it's so important for people we watch to really reflect who we are yeah. and the, the diversity right. of who we are you've always been a pretty political person haven't I have, you have yeah yeah are you were your parents political or how did you kind of become that way yeah my parents are very you know they never felt like there were certain conversations for children and certain conversations for adults they felt like whatever they were talking about whether it was civil rights or women's right to choose or affirmative action or or just whatever was happening in current events if they were talking about it we should all talk about it um, which is wonderful right yeah. because you probably became very engaged at an early age yes and I always have felt like you know I said this I, I've been saying this a lot lately that you we don't have a choice but to think about politics because even if you're not thinking about politics politics is thinking about you the decisions that are made in Washington or in all of the power centers all over the world those decisions affect our lives they affect every choice we make so we have to take responsibility for participating in our democracy and being aware and informed and I want to talk more about politics you spoke at the Democratic National Convention uh, this fall the most and you were very active I've uh, ever done. campaigning for President Obama yes. Uh, but you gave a very impassioned speech there. We have a clip of it. Let's take oh. a look. Today, there are people out there trying to take away rights that our mothers, our grandmothers, and our great-grandmothers fought for. Our right to vote. Our right to choose. Our right to affordable, quality education. Equal pay. Access to health care. And we Was that, 
<laughs> First of all, A, A, was that exciting? And B, do you think you'd ever be interested in getting into politics? See, obviously you have very strong views. I do have very strong views. I am not interested in running for office. I actually am in the administration currently. I serve on Obama's Committee for the Arts and Humanities. Right. And I'm really honored to serve in that capacity. But I'm, I am not interested in running for office. Um, auditioning is hard enough for me. <laughs> um, uh, you've been hanging out with the president and Michelle a little bit, which is sort of cool. I understand you had to put the kibosh on the rumor that you were being a little too flirty with the president. Is that true? <laughs> I read that. that yes, was like, I, yes. I think it might have been the other way around. Well, I, th I actually think it might be that people are caught up in the TV show. I was yeah. like, that sounds really familiar, but it sounds like my television show. It doesn't sound like real life. Yeah, having a hard time separating yeah. reality. Which I from... guess I should take as a compliment, but I was like, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. Now, you also were in Django Unchained, yeah. and, uh, which has been getting a lot of critical acclaim. Spike Lee said it was disrespectful mm -hmm. uh, to to his ancestors. What what do you make of that? Yeah, you know I love Spike very much. I've worked with Spike. I respect him. I I adore him as a person and as a filmmaker. The first part of that quote is that he said he won't see the film because he felt that it was disrespectful to his ancestors. So, you know, it's it's I I don't want to really. I'm not going to speak to any one person in particular, um, but I will say there were lots of people who were nervous about the film, but who came to see the film and walked away feeling inspired by the story, um, feeling uplifted, feeling hopeful, feeling encouraged, because really the story is a hero's journey. I mean, there were a couple things that really drew me to the project. One was I feel like so often in our film history, slavery has been romanticized as if it wasn't really the, all that bad and the slaves were treated pretty well. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to do a film about slavery with a director like Tarantino who is not intimidated by violence and brutality and the dark, ugly side of the human soul because he was going to be willing to, more than any other filmmaker I've ever seen, represent how awful it was. And that's important because... In every heroic story, there are dragons that have to be slayed. And in our film, the dragon is the institution of slavery itself. That is what Django has to conquer to rescue his princess, Brumhilda. And so we had to be willing to, to go to those ugly places of what slavery was so that Django could be this heroic black cowboy vigilante slave. Um, so I'm really proud of the film and really proud to be a part of it. I told you she was smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Scandal, and we have a little surprise for oh, you uh -oh. celebrating your accomplishment. Really? In this show. Oh. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Up next, Carrie didn't see this coming.